awesome takeoff. Hey everyone, welcome to the maiden flight report of the E-Flight 64mm F-16 Fighting Falcon. So I just got back from the flying field, I did two flights on it, I did a maiden flight and then a uh, follow-up flight after I did some trimming. And for those flights I used the, uh, the Spectrum uh, Smart Technology 2200 4S 30C battery. I put two packs through the aircraft, I set the flight timer for, uh, for three and a half minutes, and I came back down with uh, anywhere between about uh, about 45 and 55% uh, uh, capacity in those packs, and that was a mix of, um, of flying in that as well. The one with more capacity was actually the maiden flight, which most of the time was spent actually trimming the aircraft. Uh, once in the air, um, I did have to do uh, quite a bit of trimming on the uh, on the elevator. There was there's clearly way too much up elevator um, on the maiden flight to get started. The uh, the starting point was way too high. Um, all the reports I read suggested that I kept, I needed a lot of up elevator. And while it is true you do need a fair amount of up elevator, I clearly had had way too much. And um, once um, I took off and started climbing out, it was it was apparent that the aircraft uh, continued to uh, to climb at a pretty high rate. I also had a little bit of um, of aileron trimming that was needed because uh, the aircraft wanted to roll. So um, yesterday's flying conditions were. Um, about uh, about 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit with uh, uh, a little bit of a crosswind at about uh, 8 miles per hour with gusts to 10 and slightly overcast uh, sky conditions. And so given those conditions, the aircraft um, that wanted to go up and roll at the same time uh, was kind of making an upward um, spiral as it was going into the air and it actually um, made it extremely difficult to, uh, to orientate the aircraft. Uh, um, given those conditions, but uh, I was able to um, to work with the trimming and get the aircraft bound, back down to a more uh, reasonable level. And once I did that, I uh, started to just keep it in close and uh, started just kind of dialing in that uh, that trimming. And then after that, the uh, the flight went just fine. Um, I bound the aircraft in uh, in safe mode, and I did my takeoff in safe. Uh, the runway was grass, and it was covered in about 25% uh, snow ice mix. Um, the takeoff went just fine, did the climb out in safe, uh, flip safe off, and then began the trimming. And it was when I had safe off that you started to see the aircraft start to uh, pitch up and roll because of the, uh, the trimming condition. But pretty easy to, uh, to take care of that on the main flight. Uh, the first landing actually went, uh, went pretty well. Uh, really nothing uh, big. It was really kind of my first high alpha approach. It was something I'm not used to with my, uh, my prop planes, and that is to kind of uh, get the aircraft to come down something you know maybe not that extreme but at least come down with the uh, the nose up in the air and feeding in throttle to um, to kind of balance the aircraft out and slow that descent down uh, if you may notice that the um, on the nose cone I got my assistant here uh, helping me out um, if you notice on the <laughs> this is what she does in my work meetings as well um, if you notice I have the uh, the nose cone here that does not have the uh, the alpha probe on it and that's actually, this is here, the, uh, the factory uh, nose cone with the probe. I bought this used one, or this, uh, this spare one here, and I used that for the, uh, for the main flight, and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, at, right after uh, kind of the aircraft set down, the, um, when the nose gear came down, it came down a little bit hard into a kind of an icy, icy patch, and it actually knocked the, uh, the nose cone off, and it, 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 it kind of exited under the aircraft. And no doubt if I would have had the pitot tube on there, it would have broke the... Um, the pitot tube off. So I was very happy to have that on there. In fact, it's got a couple little um, scuffs here and there on it from where it went into the uh, the frozen ground. But it was nice to use that that spare nose cone rather than the uh, the factory original one here with the um, the pitot tube on it. Uh, second flight, um, once I had the aircraft trim, I kept it in far closer. Takeoff uh, again in safe, uh, no issues there whatsoever. In fact, it the takeoff in safe is phenomenal I mean it's just just gave it just gave it throttle and it, it shot right down the runway lifted off I was able to uh, avoid getting into the the thicker snow and ice um, on the runway which was great um, but I kept it much closer in and uh, unfortunately the sun the way the sun angle is right now the sun is was directly south of the um, of the the runway that I was taking off on so I actually took off to the south and unfortunately um, with that low sun angle, the aircraft went directly into the sun almost uh, immediately. 
But after that, I was able to kind of bring it around, stay in the pattern, and make the turn um, kind of before my eyes caught the uh, the sun, which really did help. But keeping the aircraft in close really helped with uh, with orientation. Didn't have any trouble at all on that second flight. And the key to that was just having the aircraft trimmed a little bit better, keeping it in closer. Uh, did a couple high speed runs with it and um, really a very easy aircraft to fly, very stable. Second landing, I uh, came in, hit a little bit harder and, and went a little bit further down the runway into where the icy stuff was and the nose wheel caught a big chunk of ice and came to an abrupt halt, flipped the airplane over, but no damage at all. Like it was pretty much uh, stopped, uh, stopped moving at that point in time. It was a real, real gentle, uh, just kind of a, just a tip over. So I also noticed that I flew without the uh, Sidewinder missiles on, uh, and I'm kind of glad I did that as well, because like I said, on, that, on the last flight, it, uh, it kind of tipped over a little bit, and those would have simply uh, broke off. Um, as for the flight setup, I had the uh, timer set for uh, three minutes and um, 30 seconds, and I went with 65% um, throw on the, on the ailerons with 30% expo, and I went with 80% um, throw on the elevator uh, with 30% expo on that. I wanted a little bit more um, throw on the elevator just because I wanted to make sure that I could, uh, I had plenty to work with in case I needed to uh, kind of control the aircraft in the pitch um, direction. And I was glad I did that because I needed all that travel to, uh, to get the nose back down again when it was uh, set out of trim. So now that the aircraft is, uh, is back on the ground, I'll be going through and, and mechanically trimming the aileron and the, ele and the elevators out based on the trim that I inputted on the radio. It shouldn't take very many uh, turns of the um, turnbuckles at all to get that done. Um, would I recommend this aircraft for a beginner? Uh, that's never flown before? Well, absolutely not. If you're, you need to really be familiar with four channel operation, you should be familiar with uh, flying high wing aircraft, low wing aircraft, and, and really any type of a high performance aircraft like a, yeah, like a Warbird. If you can handle, really honestly, if you can handle one of the 1.2 meter Warbirds, this aircraft here is, is not difficult at all. This is my first large EDF I've ever flown. The only other EDF I've ever flown was the, uh, the UMX A10. Uh, completely different flying characteristics than my, my little A10. But this is by no means a, uh, a difficult plane to fly. From what I understand, the F-15 Eagle um, is actually even easier to fly. And I think with that larger surface area too, it even lands a little bit easier as well. It kind of creates a little bit more of like a lifting body with all that surface area underneath. And you can kind of settle the aircraft in a little bit more. Where the F-16 is a little bit more agile and you need to be a little bit more on your toes. But uh, for my first time flying a larger EDF, there's, there's nothing that really scared me or concerned me. The aircraft didn't seem too fast. It didn't seem uh, too twitchy, too out of control. Um, I really had no trouble staying ahead of the aircraft. Um, and it was not the easiest flying conditions. Uh, the cold temps, uh, a little bit of crosswind, my, my thumbs were completely numb. Uh, I had a hat on that kind of blocked some of my, my vision a little bit. Uh, so it was not the easiest flying conditions and not normally whatever uh, like to fly in those types of uh, conditions. From a, for the summer, I can't wait to get this thing back in the air because it'll, I can actually um, enjoy flying the plane without uh, losing sensation in my thumbs. Uh, one thing that really, really helped me get this aircraft into the air, fly it successfully and back down to gr on the ground again was Real Flight 9.5. I practiced with the, uh, the E-Flight, um, uh, the F-15, uh, the 64 millimeter F-15, and the 70 millimeter uh, F-16. This particular model is not in real flight, so I had a balance between two separate aircraft there. And I would practice for about an hour a night for, for two weeks straight and do nothing more than, than take off, um, run a pattern, land, take, and just keep doing that over and over and over again. Uh, to help kind of make it a little bit more realistic, I played around with different uh, wind and turbulence settings, as well as uh, throwing the aircraft way out of trim. I would purposely... Um, move the, uh, the trims around and then go take off and then try to diagnose the, uh, the aircraft in the air and adjust my trim. And I think that really paid off nicely when uh, flying this particular plane because it was more out of trim than any of my, my normal planes. I typically get them really close where it needs just a few little clicks here and there and we're good to go. This one was, f was considerably more out of trim than my usual plane. So I'm glad I took that opportunity in real flight to practice the ability to trim the aircraft. And what I actually was able to do is put it back into safe mode, input some trim, let off the sticks a little bit, 
take it back out of safe mode and see how the aircraft uh, handled. If I let off the sticks completely uh, outside of safe mode when the aircraft was so far out of trim, it was really starting to, uh, to pitch up and roll um, quite a bit more than I was comfortable with. And I, I did not want to lose the aircraft on the maid. So threw it into safe, um, played around with the trim, took it back out of safe, and I practiced that exact same thing in Real Flight 9.5, and it paid dividends uh, with the actual aircraft. And I felt very much at ease. It has been probably, I don't know, six, maybe even eight weeks since the last time I had flown an aircraft. Um, so I was I was pretty nervous to fly something like, uh, like an EDF, uh, especially being my first EDF in those conditions after not flying for so long, being that rusty. Real Flight 9 clearly uh, made made a difference here in it. It was the difference between probably ending up in losing the aircraft and being able to bring the aircraft back down again safely without any issues. The aircraft is overall not nearly as scary or as difficult as uh, people were reporting. I had a lot of people say, look, if this is your, your first EDF, you made a mistake. This is, this is the wrong airplane. You should never buy this. You should have bought something else. And I was pretty nervous about that. But to be honest, um, no trouble at all. In fact, it, um, it, <laughs> it, for, uh, for a maiden flight that was this far out of trim, it was pretty uneventful once I got the thing trimmed. It, it really flew very nice. The takeoff was beautiful. The landing was all right. I still got to do more work because an EDF takes a little bit more uh, finesse on landing than my prop planes do. But by no means would I be scared about uh, the, the S-16 or the 64 millimeter, millimeter F-15. Um, if you can handle uh, like a 1.2 meter Warbird or you're very comfortable with four channel flight and low wing aircraft, um, I do not see these things being that scary. Safe technology is fantastic as well. It makes the, the takeoff much easier. I'm looking forward to doing some, uh, some hand launches with this thing and I'll be using safe for that as well. Put it in safe, power up and give it a toss. I think that it's gonna be perfect for that. Um, this is the first aircraft I ever bound with safe select and I can definitely say that I'll be using this more and more in the future. Um, of course, if I wanna do a plane with, uh, with retracts and flaps, um, and, and safe select, I'm gonna to need to upgrade for my DX6. I simply don't have enough channels. But that wraps up the, uh, the maiden flight report on the E-Flight 64 millimeter S-16 Fighting Falcon. So if you guys got any questions on that, um, if you have an F-16, you're getting it ready to fly, and if you have any questions on the setup or anything like that, by all means, uh, let, me, let me help you out the best I can. If you're interested in the, um, the, this particular model, it is no longer available through, um, through Horizon Hobby and E-Flight. It's been discontinued, unfortunately. Um, but the F-15, 64 millimeter F-15, is available, and it's coming out here in January with a, a new receiver in it. And those are actually available uh, for pre-order. And if you're watching this in January, then they're already available um, in the marketplace. Um, if you're trying to get into EDFs, these are a great way to do it. There's also the Habu STS, which is more of a trainer aircraft. Um, but if you want something that looks more like a fighter plane, like, like I do, I, I'm all about having that scale military look. The F-16 and the F-15 are a fantastic way to get you started in the EDF. And I can tell you one thing, now that I've successfully flown an EDF, and I says, this thing is kind of fun, um, I'm already beginning to look at um, what, what to go next with the EDFs and including such models as like the A-10. Uh, that's one of my all-time favorite aircraft as well. And uh, now that I've said, hey, I could fly EDFs and I could fly EDFs from my grass field, now I'm gonna start opening up and look at what else I can add to the, uh, the hangar. So as I mentioned before, if you guys got any questions on it, please uh, leave your comments below. I am more than happy to help out. Um, I don't know how much more flying I will get on this aircraft. Um, over the course of the winter, uh, we had a winter storm roll through and uh, there's now eight inches of snow out on the runway. So until I put some skis on this thing, it may just sit in the hangar and I'll do some more detail work to it. But otherwise that wraps up the maiden flight report on the E-Flight 64 millimeter S-16.